Hey everybody, Accurate here, welcome back. Well, I'm not going to say it yet, but we might end up having to go back and make some good use of uh, some of these corpses. I mean, I've already had human ribs, barbecue ribs, so it's not too much of a stretch at this point. Somebody's moving over here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they're not. Okay. Oh, we got. Oh, it's, a, it's another one of these guys. Shoot, I can't. Can't fight him. Let's see here. Heard anything of interest? Why do you people always ask me that? He says rhetorically. Seriously, you think we just collect rumors for the first ragtag man that watches in town? He leaves incredulous. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of thought that's exactly what you did. We're down to one move. Oh, that sucks. What do we got here on the ground? Just water. Man, if I was thirsty, I'd be okay. I am a little parched, but <laughs> we're not going to go there. I only get to move one turn now. They're just following me around to watch me die of starvation. I've never died of starvation in this game. I'm overloaded. I can't care. Oh, because I'm so weak at this point. That sucks. Let's see if that helps a little bit. There we go. I was able to regain a little bit of strength. See what's on the ground. Nothing. I should have looked over here, but it's okay. Too overloaded. So I need to come back here. I'm going to have to drop some stuff. Where's my current vehicle at? Did I drop it back there? I must have dropped it back there or something. Where did I drop it at? Where did I leave my sled at? I have my favorite stuff in it. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Okay. the world did it go? I must have dropped it back here. Not sure. But first things first, we need to find food. This is going to make it more difficult. Okay, I'm going to have to drop something else here. Let's drop this then. This uh, kind of sucks. Carrying too much weight still. Oh my gosh, really? What in the world am I carrying? Is so heavy. Let's put the pistol in here. See if that dropped weight enough. I kind of need my binoculars to see what I'm going for. At this point, I'm ready to eat some eat, eat some people. Starving, starving, starving. I think this might be curtains for us, guys. Alright, let's put this down here. Uh, probably need some shards of glass to uh, cut the meat up once I find some. There we go. S still overloaded. Let's uh, drop some clothes. Put this on. Somebody's here. I gotta. I. He's he's mine. Unfortunately, 
it, I gotta eat him. <laughs> okay. Things have gotten weird. Yep, yep. He's, uh, he's vulnerable. At least I can still fight. Okay. Well, I don't want to have to do this, guys, but, uh... That's a lot of meat. Oh, things have things have gotten a little weird. But I am really dying here. Not enough moves. What are you talking about? It I can't I have no moves. I can't get any moves back. I just fought this guy, man. I, all I need to do is have one move. I have zero moves. I'm just like, might as well just give up. What are these? Jelly belly. Okay. Maybe that was enough. Three. I didn't realize I had three on me. Oh, no. I don't want to die this way. I don't really want to live this way either, but hey. Okay. Let's see if I can get a move. No, I'm pretty much stuck where I'm at. Let's get some sleep. I'm probably going to die in my sleep. Well, I'm going to die clinging to my stuff. <laughs> right? For my cold dead hand. Hold this in case somebody tries to sneak up on me in my sleep. Probably can't even, yeah, I can't even, like, set up anything at this point. Alright, let's see if I can... Dense thick of the trees. Yep, here we go. This is probably it for us. Did I get a move? Nope, I didn't get anything. A creature approaches. Let's move up on it. A melon head. I don't... They, they sound delicious, I guess, but... No! No, let's not do that. Let's, let's keep searching for him. Maybe he has some food on him. I'm, look, I'm starving, I'm overloaded, I'm crippled, I'm, um, ew. did he hit me? He's fallen as well. Get up. Fight this. Fight this fool. Kill this guy. Got him with a punch. Oh, wait. Bruised my head with a punch. Why am I hitting him with a punch? Oh, because I'm crippled. Wait, that's a left leg cripple, huh? Let's keep beating them. There's two of them. I think it's going to be melon heads for dinner if I can beat them. Hopefully they drop some food and I can get enough energy back. He's in severe pay, pain, having trouble concentrating. He's in shock bleeding. Okay, I think I got them both. Do you have any food? No, I just have a bunch of meat laying here and I can't do anything with it. Oh, you're kidding me. And I'm bleeding. I think I'm hurt. Yeah, I'm in pain. Let's take a look at our medical conditions here. Oh my goodness. They really took it to me. Okay, well, first things first. Let's get drunk. <laughs> Let's empty this out. Let's use it here. Use it there. Use it everywhere. Minor cuts. These, uh, here we go. I'm not going to die from infection. Oh my gosh, I made it to the big city and I couldn't couldn't do anything with that. Wait. That's a different gun. They were carrying guns. Give me that back. It's 19. Oh, it's because it's the uh, ones, the jacket of hollow points and hardball. You can mix ammo, and it's not going to hurt anything. I don't know why they're not letting us do that, but... Full Metal Jacket, or... Yeah, we'll, we'll keep that. Not that I'm going to survive this. I have a feeling I'm pretty much dead. Man. I got cocky. Somebody said, I like to choose botanist because it allows me to... Uh, severe cut. 
it it allows me to uh, always have food and water, food available. You know, I'm like, eh, I never died of hunger before. And now look at me. This is not good. Just making sure that there's, there's that's my shirt. Rest and heal. It ain't happening, brother. It ain't happening. Died from blood loss. Ah! I guess I could have put a rag on it. Dirty rag. Oh my gosh! Ten days, five hours. Oh, man, we were doing so good there. Alright, let's start over. Well, I'm not going to mess around reading everything at the start of the game. It's the exact same as before, so... Alright, well, that was unfortunate. <laughs> Sorry. Um... So this is a few days later. I went ahead and uh, stopped there. I had to I had to go to work for the last couple days. Ready to start again now. I, I checked into uh, the wiki and I saw that I could. It, there's hexes there where there's like a trading post near Detroit, but I have to actually jump on the correct hex and activate it. I'm not sure if it's always there since pre-alpha or not, but uh, or, or you know early access or whatever. I don't remember it. And that's that's why I went back out looking for for food. Um, so I could have actually probably traded my way out of that situation and and bought food uh, and survived. So rather than play through the whole thing again like we just did, uh, what I want to do is I want to try to get the special event to activate at Zomzoms for you guys, see what that's about, and then I'm going to skip ahead to where I'm reaching Detroit, and I'll back brief you on all the items that we have. And that way we just kind of keep the gameplay mo moving. And if I die further on, I'll work my way back to that point again, back brief you on the items I have, and we'll continue on that way. I think that'd be probably the best way and the least frustrating for you guys. So let's do this. I'm going to show you my loadout though, so you guys know what we're dealing with. I'm going to do mechanic, uh, trapping, melee. Um, I kind of want to do botany, but now that I know that where I can trade and all that, I don't know if I really want that or not. I don't know. Hacking, electrician, and I guess I could get myopia and then pick a level two one. Or I could just pick ranged. Let's do electrician and hacking because I like the idea with the hacking or the electrician. I can't remember which one it was. It's one of those two where I could collect the uh, three iPads and then, or I, whatever they're called, so I slabs and get past uh, the hatter so i'm gonna do that and then i'll pick a, a level one let's see i want to do myopia and then we can have a level two what do i want we'll do uh we'll do this one right here food and water intakes healing rates slightly reduced that's not so bad so let's do that that combined with uh our uh trapping skill and what we know now about uh, the hexes, or I know now about the hexes. You guys probably knew about it. Let's get started here. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead here, and I'll see you guys when we reach Zomzoms. All right, guys. So here we are up at Zomzoms. I, on the way up here, I scavenged an area, and I got myself like a 76% box cart, which was awesome. And then I got in combat, and I took the box card off and apparently if you have stuff scattered on the ground and there's no the box card is big it takes up like a whole area like this if there's nowhere for it to put that item in the uh ground area here uh it'll it'll delete it like i couldn't find it again i like went back to get it immediately and it was gone it had some okay stuff in it nothing too crazy no like rifles or anything but unfortunately i lost the box card but I went ahead to make my made myself a little sled here, so that's what we're going with. I have a noise trap made, shoulder strap, some wood for fires and and boiling water, tarp. I already got myself a uh, decent saucepan, uh, mummy bag, um, some bullets which are obviously shotgun, uh, buckshot it looks like, a few recipes, 308 with uh, scope and strap, and then there's a Gauss rifle. Um, recipe a decent pocket knife multi-tool i have a hoodie but uh yeah just a couple things in the pocket here 
water tester with no uh, no battery, so it's not working right now. And then a uh, yellow lighter for additional scavenging. And I also have a crowbar slung here. I got a bunch of uh, got that, that is actually going to be a uh, little bit of cola and a couple of uh, the safe waters, the eleven dollar waters. And then I have found a first aid kit with some clean rags. And medically, we're doing pretty good. So minor cut. I'm about to take these off because they don't stop bleeding anymore. So let me see. Those are still clean rags, so I'm going to put those there. Might as well reuse them, I guess, since they're still technically clean. Uh, I had a roof collapse on me when I was scavenging. That's what these were from. And I think one of these from was from some other scavenging accident. Nothing nothing from combat yet. I only killed at one dog at this point. No, no humans. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make sure that my wrist strap is on. Hospital wrist strap is on. Got to be wearing that when we go into, into the Zom Zoms, a place to eat. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Uh, it's the same as last time, so we're scoping it out. I don't have anything to check it out from a distance with, but let's just go ahead and go up to the warehouse. Approach the line. And we're just going to go, huh, like we did before. Never mind. We became we became stock. We have, a la we have an invisible lamb on our hand there, of course. All right, let me see here. So that was it. So what do we do? We're just going to hang out, see what happens next. All right, so we met a guy. He comes up to us and sees, our, uh, sees us and he introduces himself. Relax, I don't work here. In fact, I'm going to try to make sure you don't either. Come on. He turns and heads towards the garage door. Since uh, that way's... That's away from the arena's human-sized gate. If you decide to follow, you get the sense of he's a patron too, or at least not with the management, as neither guard nor patron seem to pay him much attention. A little bird told me, he shouts over the crowd and music, you might know a thing or two about cryogenics. He talks over his shoulder as he walks, as if to tossing words back to your way. I know a guy who's looking for some heavy-duty cooling units. He may be willing to trade for some info where he could score a few. You arrive at the massive garage door, and the cool air seems uh, tingling or tinged with ozone. His name is the Stoat. Come on, dude, I'll introduce you. Out on the robot prep yard, mechanics are tending to their creations. Your companion stops alongside a tall robot reminiscent of a farm machine or farm combine. Shudder to think what it does to a human with those blades, but then again, but then something inside you moves. Crawling out of the feeder house behind the blades is a mechanic. Oh, something not inside you. Something inside moves. Okay. Uh, outside the uh, feeder house behind the blades is a mechanic who looks around and satisfied waves another out. The second looks more like uh, one of the patrons than a mechanic starved and scared. The pair skulk along the fence line and disappear out of sight. Fur coat guy turns back to you with a proud yet devious grin on his face. The stout is pleased to meet, make your acquaintance. Now about that medical plan. He suggestively taps his wrist. Uh, about that trade, just give him the info. Give him the bracelet. Let's just give him the bracelet. You snap the printed uh, bracelet from your wrist and hand it to him. He slides through it through his fingers, reading the lettering on the strap. Nice, dude. He bobs his head. I may have to do an expedition there. And, and, nice name. Ha ha. He pulls out a box from under the flight case near the combine bot. Here, he opens it up. He opens the box. Unclaimed, lost and found, let's say. He, look, he looks over your shoulder. Oh, also, you'll probably want these back. You turn and see a familiar face from the front gate. She drops your checked items in a lockbox. You glance back at it, this, at the stoat, and he shrugs. What? I can't do this alone. Your safest bet is to, to go along the fence where they want, where they went. He thumbs over his shoulder, indicating the route the mechanic and patron followed. Unless you're still hungry, he laughs, mocking a vomiting motion. See you around, dude. He calls over his shoulder. Welcome back to the warehouse. Stoat's friend awaits, or waits as you gather your things from the lockbox. Better make sure you empty that locker while you have the chance. Once ready, you head along the fence back to the relative sanity of the wastelands. So let's uh, take a look, see what we got here. Of course, we got our broad spear. We're going to make sure we ready that up. We got ourselves a cardboard box worth $100. Um, so let's see here. What else did we get? Is that it for now? Makeshift sack. We don't really need a cardboard box at this point. 
Then here's our coffee. Oh, he gave us a new spear, didn't he? 100 percent or two. All right, let's see what else we want here. Half a pair of binoculars. We'll take that because we can make a little spyglass out of that. Here in half a second with that strap that we have. Small chunk of meat. Yeah, that could have saved my life in the last run through. Mushrooms we're not sure about. Scraps of foil. Yeah. So I got my bag right there, but he gave me a 100% one. I made one. It's probably like 90 something percent. So let me click on this. Let's use that. Empty out. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. I was trying to figure out how to do this. Put our thing there. Put our crowbar here. All right. Our Leatherman. Come here. Along some ammo. Backpack with all of our goodies. Yeah, ours is down to 80.9. This was 100%, so we'll take that. I want to destroy this because I don't want that laying around. Someone pick it up, obviously. Blue jeans, 100%. We got 85% uh, cargo pants, which have extra three little spots there. So we're not going to mess with that. Uh, we'll take the little banana t-shirt. Get rid of the uh, weakest shirt we got here. That's 47. I think we can actually put all through. No, because it's, it's got the uh, the hoodie. Let's do uh, banana shirt. Polo shirt. Hoodie. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right. I'm happy with that. So that's uh, that's the interaction there. Last time I was here, I actually got myself a uh, a pot. Where did my pot go? I had a pot for stuff to boil in. Did I lose my pot? They took it away or something? That's weird. Weird things are happening with the inventory in this playthrough. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Yeah, I had a pot. Okay. Uh, yeah, not sure. We'll find another one. No big deal. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. So, I'm going to head back here and turn. Uh-oh, we're going to have a combat. Metal saucepan. Hey, he must have uh, picked up my saucepan at some point. But he's going to try to use it on me as a weapon. We're going to go ahead. I'm not going to ditch the vehicle because last time I did that, I lost it and everything inside. So we're going to hold on to it in combat. I know I'm not as good. I'm not as combat effective with that, but we'll deal with it. I don't want to talk to him. I want what he has. There we go. Melee attack. Got the broad spear. Nice. All right, he's stunned, he's bleeding, he's coughing up blood, all kinds of good stuff. Let's lure him, get him to knock, fall over. He didn't fall over that time. All right, let's keep attacking. He's a bad mother. Yeah, he stole my, he stole my saucepan. It was, uh, I think it was about 30 to 40%. So if this one's around the 30, 40% mark, we'll know that he was the one that took it, I think. Now he became a leader. That's interesting. So I'm going to kill this guy. Get my saucepan back. It's now 21%. We'll take it. Uh, anything else? Yeah, let's empty this out. See what this uh, first aid kit has. Absolutely nothing. He does have some soup for us. We'll save that. Alright. He had some uh, recipes. I'm going to check all these out. So, what I'll do here is once I clear this square, or this hex, I will uh, go ahead and Go back down, grab some meat from our base camp. Now that I have some stuff to store it in, some cured meat. And I'm going to start heading towards Detroit. I'll see you guys in Detroit. But in the meantime, let's see what we got here. I don't need a campfire. Clean rags, I don't know how to make that. That's not a problem. Sterilized water pill. I guess we can put that there. I, mean, I, don't, think, I don't think you honestly need the recipe for those. I think they automatically give that to you. Yeah, those are pretty useless. Makeshift sack. All right. Yeah, I think that should do it for for this particular area here. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you in Detroit soon. So, wish me luck. All right, guys. We are back in Detroit. I'll give you a rundown here on where we're at with our player. Not, do, not doing too bad. Um... See here, got the hardened spear, of course, doing well with that. Got ourselves a rifle scope with a strap, dogman fur coat, lots of ammo, and this ammo is worth a lot of money, as you can see. So there we have that. Uh, got some batteries. Got a water tester with uh, batteries in it. 
Got 11 charges on that. Got some uh, soups, a couple soups there to eat if need be. Some crude arrows I just happened to pick up. A uh, really good Leatherman tool. A uh, good Bic lighter. A bunch of uh, recipes. Let's see here. Got some cola and we got a bunch of water. First day we have painkillers and uh, antibiotics as well as some clean rags. Medically speaking here, we're in pretty good shape. There's These are all... These are all just minor cuts that I went ahead and covered up with clean rags. I'll probably take them off now. Let me see here. Yeah, there's no bleeding, so I'm going to take those off and actually put these up here so we have them again when need be. I look I look worse than I actually am. A bunch of minor stuff. It's all like uh, when I was searching, I didn't have the lighter. And it seems like if you don't have the lighter, you uh, tend to not do so well searching. Got a couple sleeping bags. I went ahead and picked up a second one because they're worth $80 each. Got a few uh, rifle straps here. That one's... Let's just get rid of that, honestly. It's like worth pennies. Some uh, makeshift traps. I don't know why we have this with the... Uh, thread. I don't need any threads. Let's just move that over there. I could probably store ammo in these things. That would probably be a pretty good deal. A little cracker. And three tarps. Some firewood. I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah. We were pretty much maxed out on, like, got a good amount of foil. There was an article that I read about Camp Grayling, and it said that there's, like, this uh, X-ray or some sort of a force field that they use to protect it. And somebody, they were talking about some crazy guy made a tinfoil suit and somehow managed to get past their security system. It was just a news article, and I happened to read it. So I have to wonder if maybe collecting tinfoil and then making a tinfoil suit uh, will help us out later. Maybe we need to get in there. I don't know. So, all right. So that's where we're at now. Yeah, things are looking good. I have the crowbar with the strap. I upgraded the crowbar that I had from before. The other one I think was about 13, 20% somewhere around there. Found this one. So I deconstructed the other one, destroyed it. Obviously don't want it being used against me. So let's get into town here. All right. People everywhere. Yes. And, uh, welcome to DMC Sprawl. Yep, and we know where um, Last Chance, like, food truck is here. Canteen, yeah, that's what it is. But uh, I didn't know that I, there was a place for me to actually, uh... There's a, the, the charges that we can recharge things with. I didn't know that there was actually somewhere I could trade. And had I known that in the last episode, I would have done better about trading and then eating here and not died from hunger like we did before or I did before it wasn't your fault my fault so let's see here we're doing good health wise though you know we're not down to four we're not burdened we're we're just doing really well a little bit tired I I kept traveling throughout the night last night I didn't actually even stop and sleep I just kind of kept pushing forward one hex at a time so we're here at the gate we're gonna get refused entry because we don't have the right to we don't have the right to arm whatever chip or whatever right pass so here's a uh, here's the hatter we're gonna go in here um we're gonna do the electricity eh, something i could probably do trapping let's, let's try trapping this time see what it is because i didn't pick up any ice slabs on the way like i, I wanted to have three of them because that's what he wanted but uh since i didn't find those and this is a higher rated skill than electron electrician so let's try this i don't know it should be interesting something doesn't add up you're no seasoned mercenary but you're sure any fixer worth his salt is going to be careful with whom he contracts for work. And a visitor's pass can't be cheap. So there's nowhere around this. Just a cakewalk test. Plus, Hatter approached you. Nobody walks into town out of nowhere and gets that kind of welcome. Something doesn't wash here. It's making you edgy. I don't like this, you say. Stopping short of sounding threatening. Sounds like someone's trying to set me up. That gets Hatter's attention. You hear a creak of leather as the guard tenses. Hmm, he says, leaning back in his creaky chair. Turns out you may, maybe you are worth the extra attention you seem to have garnered. He looks down at the blank spot on his desk, considering something for a moment, starts talking at it. Your, let's call him employer, has a particular interest in you. He leans forward and starts interacting with his security console, interested enough to open this earns, earn contract with express instructions that it only be assigned to you. Said if I find you, 
trying to enter DMC. Said I'd find you trying to enter the DMC. Said he'd front the cost of the visitor's pass if I got you to do it. Finishes a keystroke, then gestures to the wall monitors. One of the monitors switches to a view of this room with a cycling time code in the lower cor corner. After a few seconds of fast forwarding, it switches to real time playback. There, standing where you are now, a black mass about the size of a man talks with a hatter. The detail seems to be glitchy as if it were some dark colored static distorting the signal, but only around the figure. What's with the censoring, you ask? Don't know, he says. Look, looked normal in person. It must be some sort of EM interference. The discussion's short, punctuated by the figure, handing Hatter a small object, then leaving. As a rule, I don't disclose client info like this, he stops the video. But you seem like a decent type, more to the point, resourceful. And while money talks, I'll take a competent operative over cash any day. He reaches into a drawer and pulls out a small black wristband. The pass is yours. I'll keep my ear to the ground for any info on this Reaper fellow and let you know. Oh, so we just got the we just got the pass. And hey, he says before letting it go. Maybe you come around again when you're looking for some work. So I guess general rule of thumb is going to be use your highest skill available. If you have multiple skills, use the one that required the most points to get. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna kind of use that rule and see how that works going forward. View received items. Let's do that. Detroit Mega City tracking bracelet. Put that on. Oh, I got two. I got two wrists. I can put it on either wrist. Let's put it on that one. Consume. Use this to re-enter Hatter's office. Gil and Burton's. Um, I think this is just gonna be Detroit, right? Again. Yeah, we we found it. <laughs> I don't think I need help. If I need help finding Detroit now, I'm in I'm in trouble. Uh, so what's this? Let's see. Let's let's re-enter. We cross the muddy street towards the old flop house. See if Hatter's available. Yeah, let's do that. Hatter's guard informs you that Hatter's on an important business right now. Won't be back until tomorrow. Okay. Well, we can get in now. Let's find the uh, little trading post here, though. I want to see. I'm just really curious to see where it was, since I missed it and it cost me my uh, my life and about uh, junk market that's it that's what I was looking for as you navigate the winding alleys of the DMC sprawl you enter a huge structure fashion of shipping containers throngs of people enter and exit the structure through a doorway on one side inside you can see a thriving bazaar where people trade scavenged items in the light of a thousand lanterns and bug zappers there is thick with sweat smoke and the smell of bar oh God, barbecue no more barbecue and spices this is the sprawls notorious junk market it's not not apparently that notorious because I didn't know about it last time. Pick uh, pick up items to purchase them, or drop off items to sell them. Oh well, I, I would have liked store policy start shop. Let's look at these store policies. Hardware software. If hardware software is not switched on and unlocked, vendors will only pay the hardware's value as if it were empty. Items will then be appraised by a specialist and resold at full price. Medicine. Vendors will only pay a nominal fee for unidentified pills. Pills will then be identified and sold at full price. Okay, so I guess that's where your medic school would come in. When in doubt, verify the vendor's pre-purchase or vendor's purchase price before surrendering items to them. All sales final. Okay, very good. Well, let's get back in there again. I'm, I'm interested. What we got here? Oh, it's on the ground. Why is this on the ground? Cheap members. There's just stuff all over the ground here. Three thousand dollars. I'm not sure why this is on the ground. Really nice 1911 here. Pretty sure my ammo will fit that too. You got. I think these are jacketed hollow points versus a uh, hardball. So I'm not sure which is which, but it'll work. Oh, I can't pick it up. I just put. Give me my ammo back. So this is like someone else's stuff. I can't I can't actually pick this stuff up. Three thousand dollars for that. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I wonder if these are things that I can buy. Okay. Let's uh let's do a little test thing here. Oh, uh, I got an extra Mummy bag here. Let me see here. 
What happens? We have zero money. Ah, we got $80. Okay, cool. Cool, okay. And, uh... That. I took an extra Leatherman, because they seemed like they were small and worth quite a bit of money. So, that's my good one. This is my junk one. Alright, so we're up to 125. Alright, see how it works. Alright, I got you, I got you. Don't want to sell my bracelet, that's for sure. How much is my bracelet worth anyway? Oh, yeah. I don't get nearly as much as they get as they as they get, that's for sure. Okay. I'm pretty happy with what we got now. We got a little bit of spending, a little bit of walking around money. All right, I'm gonna check this here just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, we can talk to this guy. Hey, we seem very social sociable. Uh, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to talk to me, does he? Down here, squeezed between the DMC's southern wall and the Great Swamp's proverbial hard place, you finally find a place boast boasting vacancy. St. James Parkade. Okay. So, rent a full-size van for 24 hours. Rent a hatchback for 24 hours. Or rent a pickup. So this is a place where you can... You can rent one of these, and... Uh, It'll give you a space to put your inventory. Sort of like an area to just check your inventory so you can go out and run around. Uh, St. James Parquet is what sounds like pre-apocalypse parking garage, except in this case repurposed to uh, ber birth, breath, birth, humans. Someone had the bright idea to leave all the cars in the parking garage, hook them up to an unlicensed power tap, and charge occupancy by the night. A patron could rent an open pickup if they... Uh, they're down on their luck and own a sleeping bag. They could rent a hatchback if they have a little extra spend to spend on heat and shelter and door locks. Or if they have a taste of finer living, splurge for a full-size van with his own chem toilet. It's no Ritz Carlton, however. It's also not sleeping exposed to anyone who wanders by, and that's what counts. All right, so that's our little, we have a little hotel option there. Uh, we, we're going to leave that for now. Okay. When I bump into those guys, I'll talk to them later. So I think I came that way, yeah. There's my little red dot. My little red feet everywhere. Alright, it's good to be finally talking to you guys again. It's been a lonely uh, journey over here. It feels weird playing a game and not talking. I almost feel like I should be talking just to talk. Now, the f there's like 15 hexes out from here is an area where it's frequently visited by people from the city so that those like 15 hexes out are pretty well picked clean uh, so we could go here and search this little house odds are we're not gonna have much luck so okay um, I want to see if I can now get get something from the canteen now that I have some money I bet you that's what was preventing me from getting it yeah, that's what it was I didn't have any money so mixed veggie bowl veggie bowl with protein Sweet and sour seagull wings. Oh, that sounds delicious. Tenders or non-veg stew. Which would just be stew. Or some bottled water for 20 bucks. Oh my gosh. So I could go out and just refill water and start doing that. Sort of grind it out that way. You know, $11 at a time. But we can definitely uh, get food here and we're not going to have to worry about hunger or anything like that. So, alright. Now that we got it figured out. Let's go inside. Uh, let's go explore Detroit. Like, inside the perimeter. Right? Sound good? All right. I don't think I need any charges right now. I don't have anything that requires charges. So, okay. Let's head on inside here. All right. Navigating the twisting maze of shacks and tarp shelters, Detroit's massive wall stands as a constant backdrop to the east. So half a dozen stories high and probably almost as thick. I remember reading this, but I'll read it again. The city walls are an impressive sight to behold. Armed towers, bristling with surveillance arrays, stand at regular intervals, keeping watch over the sprawl and likely the city within. Before you, a giant vid screen on the three gatehouses flash instructions about pass requirements and threat levels as flocks of people stream into and out of the gates. You take your place in line to on the right with others entering the city. At the front of the line, the guard motions you closer. A moment of pregnant silence proceeds... Uh, a satisfying chirp and the monitor flashes visitor pass whatever authorized 
The guard ushers you forward and you begin down a longish stretch of empty corridor lined with harsh xenon, xenon lighting. Beyond the opening at the other end, you see throngs of activity and the flicker of busy signage flips by passing people. Great Central Station. Okay. We got the Detroit Savings Bank. That's where when we woke up, that was the only thing that we really had other than our name on the computer in the uh, cryo facility. The Red Gnome, I think that's a bar. I can't remember. And we have Haggerty Health Clinic. And I'm pretty sure that's where we can get our eyes fixed. The myopia. So let's head down here to Detroit Savings Bank. This, uh, this is how we get out, right? Okay, so let's head on down here to Detroit Savings Bank. Detroit Savings Bank turns out to be a surprisingly tricky business to find. It has a presence for certain. Self-service terminals and near ubiquitous uh, are near ubiquitous, winking at passerbys from countertops, ad walls, and alcoves. But there's a little more to these terminals than signage, lights, and a screen. It doesn't even appear to be a place to dispense cash or, or insert a card. After a bit of walking, though, you eventually find a Detroit Savings Bank micro branch with more than a screen. So it looks like there's somebody inside finally. You're outside the Detroit Savings Branch Gate 11 micro branch. A secure climate control booth, slightly larger than the covered bus stop, sits on the sidewalk here. It has uh, the requisite self serve terminal on the exterior. But looking through the transparent walls, there appears to be an actual human teller inside. Oh my gosh. Uh, see, we got an electrician and a mechanic. Look for, a, look for a junction box or look for HVAC intake. I'm going to go with the higher level skill, right? Threaten to tell it. Yeah, we're going to do the mechanic. Let's do that. Climate control means this thing has an intake someplace. Finding an obstruction. Finding and obstructing that will make it downright uncomfortable in there. If she leaves, though, it'll be uh, to await a technician. So your window of opportunity will be short. Let's do it. Block the HVAC. Yep. Yeah. Intake. Okay. Grabbing a couple of posters from a nearby wall, you nonchalantly place them on the side of the booth over the HVAC insta intake. Given the number of posters slept on all surfaces around this part of town, nobody seems to pay you any mind. There's a chance. There's a slight fluttering as uh, the last poster buffets in the draft, but you smooth it out and you hear a strange. You hear, you hear a change in the fan pitch. Over the next several minutes, you notice the booth starting to fog up, and the teller makes a phone call. She gathers some things and exits the front door and locks it behind her. Now is your chance. You're outside the uh, DB, DSB Gate 11 micro branch. Now empty and locked. Wait for the teller to return and log in. You spot the teller crossing the street towards the bank again, just as a moped slows to a halt on the sidewalk nearby. The moped is emblazoned with uh, Descartes kiosks and enclosures, and has one of the one of those weather shells looping over the rider seat. Large, rigid saddlebags protrude from the rear. The moped rider dismounts, and it appears to be a gangly woman in drab blue-gray windbreaker, in a drab win, uh, blue-gray windbreaker and slacks. She pulls a toolkit from the moped's storage and meets the teller at the door. They both enter, and the teller, the teller taking her seat, and the technician begins reviewing something on her tablet. Watch the teller log in. Watch the teller log in. Yeah, let's watch the teller log in with our tools. Positioning yourself for optimal viewing. You await the teller's login. However, a shout startles you out of your vi vigil. The technician's checklist goes on hold as she notices you staring and starts speaking in her earpiece. The teller has been alerted too and is standing up. Things are about to get pretty hot here. Time to jet. All right, well, we tried. Let's head to the Red Gnome. The Red Gnome is an exception in an already exceptional city. Situated on a busy corner of Gate 11's Neon Alley, the single-story streamlined diner defies the densely packed air high-rises and elevated roads around it. In fact, several adjoining buildings seem to grow over the diner, using the precious space above the roof. It appears almost untouchable in an otherwise claustrophobic warren of glittering skyscrapers and patchwork overpasses. Even before entering, you get the sense that there's something unusual about this place. For one thing, despite a prodigious amount of tagging on every surface, the diner is left unmarred, as if those around here know better than to try. However, that ominous thought doesn't seem to deter anyone's hunger. A red line snakes out from a takeout window under a sign boasting real soul food, real meat. Like, real non-human meat, hopefully. Uh, let's enter it. See what's going on. Pushing through the stainless steel door, you rush a rush of warm air 
of warm, greasy air fills your no nose, replacing the damp coolness from outside. Your stomach erps almost instantly in anticipation of whatever you smell in the grill. The decor is somewhat less inviting, however. Despite a number of lights, most of them seem incapable of dispelling the dimness in the space. Uh, and uh, sepia-stained curio along the walls seem to capture more of the creepy awkwardness of the diner's history than nostalgia. Padded stools line the long countertops, and booths run the length of the outer walls, sporting ripped vinyl benches. A stark pattern of one-inch tiles dots the floor. Not surprising in retrospect that the takeout line is so long. Still, an open seat and a warm meal are promised our promised land compared to eating condensed soup in the rain. You shove yourself into an empty booth and start paging through the laminated menu. All right. So we have a combo number two, which is jumbo fried shrimp, collard greens, black eyed peas, and peach cobbler. That sounds amazing. And we are hungry and thirsty. Uh, combo three, Cadillac burger, smashed potatoes with gravy and cornbread. That's thirty-two fifty. Then we have combo one, which is the middle of the road here. Fried chicken, mac and cheese, red beans, with rice. Oh man, what do I want? I don't think I'm gonna go with combo two. It's down between the Cadillac burger, burger, mashed potatoes, gravy, and cornbread, or fried chicken, mac and cheese, and red beans. I'm gonna go with this one. Yeah, that sounds good. Fried chicken, mac and cheese, and red beans and rice. Let's let's do that. There we go. I know I don't, probably don't need to eat right now. Currently selected responses combo four or combo combo one, and the price is gonna be twenty four fifty. Okay. So be it. I'm just interested to see what happens with our uh, hunger and hell and thirst. Hey, that that worked. That worked. For once, fried chicken might be the healthiest thing for you. After days in the wild, a little bit of body fight and fat might actually do you some good. When it arrives, you can almost taste the greasy spices from its intoxicating scent. For go now, I'm getting hungry, man. I'm, gonna have to, I'm literally going to have to end this episode and go so get something to eat. I haven't eaten all day, and I work. I was at work all day, so. For going utensils, you dive into the chicken and it slides easily off the bone to your, into your gullet. The mac and cheese is rich and creamy, and the beans and rice feel like it fills your stomach for days. If paradise was a dish, it'd be fried chicken in front of a starving scavenger. So yeah, I had my pizza all ready to go because I got like a Domino's, uh, sort of like a barbecue chicken pizza that I like to make uh, on their menu. And I ate half of it yesterday, a deep dish, medium. And then I had the other half for today, and we had just pulled them out of the oven, me and the other officer, because he got one as well. And we were just sitting down to have lunch, eat, watch a little bit of The Wire, which is our sort of tradition, or season three, episode one right now. And uh, we were just getting ready to go, and then we had to go on a domestic for a juvenile that was being held down by the parents. He was trying to leave and run away, and the dad was, like, laying on him. And so the, I had to put my pizza, box it back up, put it in the refrigerator, uh, I'm off today, well, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so tomorrow, the next three days, I, I, it'll be there on Monday. I'll be glad of it Monday, but this is not helping right here. <laughs> so, anyway, nothing, I mean, we didn't arrest the kid or anything like that, but uh, they were afraid he's going to run away, so we're like, uh, w what should we do? I'm like, take his shoes, take all his shoes away. I mean, at least he'll be barefoot when he's running away. I said, uh, I'd recommend taking his pants and his shirt. All he needs is boxers to sleep through the night, because it was nighttime. They're like, well, we're not going to take all his clothes, but we'll take his shoes and put those in our bedroom. So that was the solution anyway. All right, here we go. Confirm. Oh, by the time I got back, it was time for me to go. So I didn't even get to uh, to go eat my pizza. You lean back and let out a con uh, contented sigh. For once, your stomach is full, the air is comfortable, and there's no rain on your head. Your server comes to by the table, leaves a receipt, and carries off your tableware. Someone just served you. It's going to be hard facing the wilderness again after this. You turn the receipt over and it's under under some scribbling. It reads twenty four fifty. Uh, yeah, pay the. Can we leave a tip? No, we're not gonna run away. Come on now. It's a hefty price for a plate, but the likelihood of food in your stomach will definitely last a while. Plus, there aren't a lot of chickens chickens running around in the wilderness, let alone deep fryers. Must be some sort of vertical uh, farm around here. No room for anything but. You pay for the meal, then the thought occurs to you: Do people still tip? Yeah, you're going to leave a 450 tip. You're going to tip. Yes, we're going to tip. Whether tipping is still a rule or not, you still have a feeling you'll be back here again. Can't hurt to leave a good impression. You dole out a bit extra for the fine meal. That sounds very fair. And that was a fair fair tip, too. All right, um, Haggerty Health Clinic. Let's check that out. Haggerty, Haggerty Health Clinic is a pretty busy spot. Busy spot. It's proximate 
in proximity to Gate 11 and its mercenary attitude towards clientele ensures that it has a steady stream of business, both from inside the DMC and sprawl. The double H, as it is often called, offers a wide spectrum of health services. Those include diagnostics, cleanings of dressings and wounds, therapeutics, including nanobotic suspension treatments, and prescription drugs. There's also an on-site augmentation clinic where patients can elect for prosthesis, uh, prosthetic enhancement. These uh, highly desirable services may require a special permit in addition to the significant price tags. Okay. As you cross the street, you can't help noticing the activity on the rooftop. The high-pitched whines of turbine turbines mark the comings and goings of hover vehicles, spraying water from the landing pad into a fine mist that rains down around the building. A large proportion of these vehicles appear to be unaffiliated private ambulance services. You huddle your shoulders against the spray and duck under the brightly lit awning, staggering uh, automatic doors forming a crude airlock swoosh open as you approach. Yeah, let's head on inside and see what it's all about. Inside the lobby, it looks like any other clinic. There's banks of attached seats covering most of the floor and counters for both receiving patients and dispensing pharmaceuticals. Dominating the right wall near a, ha a hallway and elevator bank is an LED sign displaying the currently served customers. Letters and numbers, letter and number combinations update at random intervals as nurses escort patients to and from the room. You head over to the counter and get your waiting number. It isn't long before the LED lotto calls your number and you're led away for consultation. What services do you require today? Let's see your blood transfusion, that's expensive. Broad-based nano robot suspension treatment for 363. Uh, some antibiotic pills times six, 300. Some clean uh, cleaning and dressing of wounds, 376. Full diagnostic workup, 213. Rehydration and malnutrition therapy, 183. Core body temperature regulation, 199. Sedatives, 120, and painkillers, 180. Interesting. Well, I don't think we need anything right now. So, how do we get out of this? Oh, right here. Leave it or go upstairs to the prosthetics and augmentation procedures. Okay, let's check that out. Haggerty Health also offers several elective procedures, which involve implanting devices and replacement tissue. Before receiving any such procedure, the patient must undergo preliminary testing for eligibility, as not all patients are good candidates for synthetic implantation or augmentation surgeries. Some procedures will require additional testing, and in some cases, special permits or authorizations. So, an eye aug, artificial eye replacement, 5,600, artificial eye night vision upgrade, that's kind of cool. That'd be 300. Artificial eye telescopic upgrade, that's 200. And an eye surgery is 1,000. And eye surgery, I think, is what we want, right? Because we do have the... Uh, yeah, I, I can't access it right now. The I'm pretty sure we have myo, myopia. I'd like to get all these. I want them all. I'm just greedy. What can I say? All right, well, let's head back downstairs. Is there anything else we can help you with? Nah, we're good. Decided to leave the clinic. All right, so I say we head back to Detroit Savings Bank. We gotta get some answers here, right? You return to the side of the DBS micro branch, but stop suddenly when you notice it has a new feature: a private security guard. The DBS probably amped up the security at their micro branches after your escapades. Looks like you need to find another way to locate the info you need. Oh, that's too bad. I don't think we can do anything else here. Let's take a look at gate 11. Merging with a line of people and vehicles, you make your way through the gate tunnel into the muddy, muddy part of the of tent city of the sprawl. Okay. So we're back here. Um, let's go see if we can talk to the Hatter now that we've been inside. He might be willing to see us. See if he's available. Yeah, he's on important business. Okay, so I'm not sure where to go from here. I can't remember. We're well, well rested and everything. I kind of want to go out and do a little more scavenging. Uh, maybe we could... I'm not sure what our mission is. At this point. But we can go do a little bit of uh, exploring around the area. I think... Um, I think we know that this is all sort of like a 
wasteland down here, like a toxic wasteland down here to the south. So I'm thinking what we might do is we might just kind of come up around this way, loop back around, and see what we can find. Maybe we just go straight up and then kind of come straight back down and then kind of keep doing that. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Sort of almost like a, a line search, like a grid search kind of thing that we're just going up and down vertically. Yeah, let's do that. So, okay. And we can collect things as we go along. Let me see here. How are we doing? We've got plenty of uh, room to carry things. So, we'll come back, gather money, so on and so forth. I'm not going to mess with this house or anything really super close at this point. Let's see how we're doing. Just go straight up. That's kind of what I want. So, I'm going to kind of, kind of keep the uh, ocean in somewhat close if at all possible now we should start moving I don't think we're going to find much here so I'm, I'm going to skip that part it's starting to get a little dark here I'm going to get up high of course I can always sleep outside if I need to We've done it before. Ain't no thing. Okay. We're, we're tired. So, yeah, we'll just set up camp here. We can do that. Uh, we got one move. I can go ahead and craft myself up a... Let me see here. Tarp shelter. Clear that out. Makes us a little bit more noticeable, but that's okay, because we've got, like, uh, noise traps. I'll throw, drop down two of those. I could craft another one. Do I have enough? Yeah, I do have enough moves. Let's go and do a noise trap. And I don't want to use that because I think that's the one that contains my pills. Let's put that back. And let's grab uh, that. I wish I could. I wish I would just remember the recipe that I prefer, you know. I'm thinking I should sell some of this ammunition, honestly. Because uh, I find it pretty easily. And I don't have ranged right now, so I'm just going to hold on to it for the time being. But uh, I don't think it would necessarily be the worst idea to sell it. Now we're maxed out on alertness. We shouldn't get snuck up on at this point. We should be immediately alerted. And let's use our little uh, sleeping bag. Get some good rest. Yeah, we're in good shape. Let's, uh, let's uh, sleep, and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, well, I woke up a little before morning, but that's all right. Okay, we're going to get moving. We're going to mess around. So let me uh, go over here, that over here, there. Why did that one come apart? It's weird. Huh, not sure. All right. Sort of deconstructed itself. Oh, that's fine. See here, let me... Uh, Go back, put that over there, deconstruct that. I think we're good. Why did you put that in there? That's not where you belong. You go with your friends down here. Why? See, that doesn't make sense. I don't know why it put two threads or two long medium, medium uh, strings in here rather than put them right where you got them. Remember where you got them. Put them right back where you... Hey, game. Put the stuff back where you found it. You know what I mean? The irony of that is what that was the whole argument of between the, the kid and his uh, parents. It was he was using a tool to he's using tools to clean a carburetor and uh, didn't get permission to use dad's tools or boyfriend's tools. And it escalated from there, and then which resulted in me not being able to eat. So. No rest made. Hey, it's some guards. Cool. That's kind of creepy. You guys are sneaky. I was wondering if I had my little spyglass. I kind of want to get up here and get a better view of everything. Let's do that. Okay. We're right on the ocean or the edge of the water.
I like how we're getting like five turns per. Are we far enough out? Uh, one. Let me. Oh, geez. Am I actually going to have to count all these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. Okay, we should be outside the low loot area. I think I think I read somewhere it was fifteen hexes. So let's give it a shot. See what we can find. Two storage sheds and a destroyed office building. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, we'll take that. We can trade that. We can trade that. We'll get some sparks in there. <laughs> That's only worth three dollars, though. That's worth three dollars. Yeah, we're not taking those. Those are bulky, and I don't want them. All right. Well, that'll pay for our next meal when we come back. So we've already paid for the next meal. At uh, I might I might just get a snack from the uh, one outside. I'm not gonna eat at the diner every every day. Um, all right, let's end turn there. We got more places to scavenge inside of here, though. We got another storage shed. And that's only worth two dollars, and that's worth thirty-nine cents. So yeah, yay. We're not gonna take those, obviously. Okay, we got ourselves a brand new backpack, is what we got. We can get rid of the kids' backpack. And we're going to put this one up. It's 47%. That's 70%. I know the other one's a little bit better, but uh, we'll take that. What about the meds here? What do we got? We got some meds. It's worth $6. Uh, they're unidentified. That's the thing. That's the, that's the that's the rub. Let's empty those out and empty these out. Put these here. Put these here. And put these here. Like so. Yeah, I got some more pain, pain meds. Map's only worth $2. Yeah, we don't need that. It's just junk, honestly. That's a good backpack, though. Let's empty this thing up. Put this one on. How's much is the backpack worth? Eh, not too bad. We can take that back. I can't put a backpack inside there. It won't let me. I could, should be able to stuff it in there. All right, we'll take that back. It's $22. Okay, let's head up here. Put this here. And then let's just see if I can make this happen. That's the way I wanted it to go. All right. Sometimes the game's smart. Sometimes not so much. Like when it got rid of my beautiful 70%, 80 percent uh, shopping cart that I was so happy to find complete. We're gonna have to kill it. I haven't killed anybody yet. Wait, no, I killed a couple melon heads. I don't. Do they count? I don't think they count. Oh, and a bad mother. I did kill a bad mother. So I, I killed a couple people. I just, you know, you get, you lose track. All right, it just happens. Yeah, we're gonna get up close and engage. So you got uh, these people, Frere, barefoot. He's got a little backpack, it looks like. So I'm not taking that. I'm not ditching vehicles because, I, like I said, I've lo I lost the uh, the shopping cart that way, man. I'm not gonna do it again. I'll fight with a. I'll fight with carrying around my little sled, pulling my sled with my string. As humorous as that might look. So he moved away from me. Let's uh, close distance and attack again. Now he's bleeding, parrying. I'm going to lure him, get him to fall down. Oh, he's in shock. Yeah, he's hurting now. So we're in good shape. He passed out from unbearable pain. Yeah. The uh, the lure worked quite well. we got to close distance, though. So. He's still unconscious. Let's just finish him off with a melee surge. Yeah, TBI. Severe TBI. Yeah, hit him again. What do we got? What you got? Eh, I got some food. I could have used that in the last last one. It's cooked. It's uh, not spoiled, so we're going to eat that. How much are these DVDs? No, they're not worth it. Oh, the cargo pants are worth some money, though. We'll take those. Take that. Oh, this game's so good, isn't it? Folks? Ah, what do we got here? 45 cents. What? It's 0.9% condition. Oh, I got excited there for half a second. All right. All right. Well, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> all right. All right. So, let's end our turn. Oh, we got a blue sash guy. Uh, Kind of want to kill him and take his sash, because I think wearing the sash or something like that, or having the sash, does something. I need to do more research on that, and I'll do that between this episode and next. Oh my gosh, we're running low, uh, almost out of time, I think. 
because I, I split it up into sections. I think there were about 10 minutes at the start when I kind of got killed, died of starvation, blood out, or whatever it was. And then I think there was about 10 minutes of me doing Zom Zom stuff, and another 10 minutes of me like that and Detroit combined, and then like this, maybe maybe 40, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think I need to stop though soon. Kind of lost track of time. If this ends up being an hour and 20 minute episode, congratulations. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it didn't annoy you guys too much. Oh my gosh, we're so far away. Can we talk to him? Let's talk to him. Talk to him. I don't think I've talked to him before. Uh, he didn't respond. I'm gonna try talking again. He's coming at me. Hey, he's coming at me and he's not saying anything. Purity brings... Purity brings its light in pain. Okay, weirdo. Not sure what that means, but I'm gonna go explore this area over here. And then once we get done exploring this hex, we'll uh, we'll end this episode here. And I will get to editing, and then I am going to get something to eat. I'm so hungry. Especially after that description that they had of the uh, the chicken. Oh, it's not so good. So I got a Texas style, or Texas, what is it? Texas red chili. Basically, it's like no, no, I made it. It's, it's basically ground chuck, uh, slow cooked. Spices, onion, no uh, no tomatoes, no beans. Got a recipe for that. So I have that to eat if I want it. And then I got, uh, my wife made chicken masala. Or no, not masala. Not, that'd be chicken tikka masala. That, not Indian. Uh, the in, the Italian one. Uh, marsala. There we go. Chicken marsala. Um, so that's up there. And then I also have something else. Can't remember what else. But well, I got options, so don't worry, guys. I'm gonna be okay. Don't starve. I know you guys are probably worried about that. Oh, we got another silly backpack, and that's worth twenty-eight bucks as well. All right. So we'll probably take that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like to trade? Backpacks. Oh, I can't stack it, can I? Hmm. Let me see if I can make make a little room here. Can I make this work? Make it work. Make it work. Let's get rid of the wood for now. That might work. If I go that way, it will. Yeah, I could always put things in there too, because wow, that's actually a bonus space. Because look, the the area that this takes up, uh, the area inside of it's much bigger. So I should be putting, I should actually start putting stuff inside of these to make more inventory space. If I need to, I'll, I will do that. Don't worry. But it's good to know. I'm glad I kind of noticed that. It's not a one for one trade when it comes to the space. Let's keep going here. Let's check out the storage shed, and this should do it for our episode. No useful items. All right, guys, let's see where we're at on the map. We're making our way up there, so. All right, folks, so like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Y'all take care. See you in the next one.